Hudson. Thank you, Mr Chair. It's with absolute pleasure I rise to follow uh, Mr Tabato after that rather professorial uh, dissertation. Uh, I'd like to talk, Mr Chair, right at the moment as we're on par, part one about this issue around independence. And I am drawn, sir, back to, uh, to paraphrase, paraphrase Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who noted, and I will paraphrase so as to not bring the chair into this debate, that he is entitled to his own opinion, Mr Chair, but he is not entitled to his own facts. And the facts are very simple around independence, Mr Chair. Both the Standards Board and the Standards Executive are granted statutory independence under this proposed amendment. And I would particularly draw members' attention to clause section 7.2 for the Standards Executive, and I will uh, go to that clause and read for their, for their edification, sir, that in the discharge of their duties, that the functions of the New Zealand, New Zealand Standards Executive in performing the functions referred to in subsection 1A to J, the New Zealand Standards Executive must A, act independently, and B, have regard to the value of standards, the legitimate use of standards, the importance of maintaining expert input into the standards development process. Similarly, sir, clause 12.2, the board must act independently in undertaking its functions under subsection 1. So members opposite can talk about independence until the cows come home. The fact of the matter, Mr Chair, is that both the Standards Board and the Standards Executive are conferred with statutory independence under this bill. Parliament cannot confer any greater independence than that. And having worked in the, in the private sector, I can tell you, well, I can tell you, Mr Chair, because it is you and other members present, that actually co-locating in an office is not actually conducive necessarily to the collaboration that a private organisation might want to see. I've worked for multinationals here. If you want to actually um, uh, uh, foster collaboration, it's not achieved simply by putting people in the same building. So we confer independence on the people that need it most. They'll work in an organisation, sir, for the reason that, and I'll now go back to part, uh, to part one of this bill, for reasons to support why we're actually making these changes. So if I draw members' attention back to, the, to, to clause three, the purpose of this bill, the purpose. The purpose of this act is to make provisions for standards and conformity assessments in New Zealand that are consistent with international practice and facilitate trade and protect the health, safety and well-being of the public individuals. Why are we bringing this function or these groups into the agency or the, the environment of MB, because that is the agency that is tasked with business development and helping to understand how we can uh, help businesses position themselves to grow in New Zealand and outside of New Zealand. It actually makes sense, sir, if you're going to have standards that are going to help us to conform to sell our products both in New Zealand but particularly offshore, actually having them working with the ministry that is tasked with actually helping to build innovation, scientific progress and trade across or, or business development outside of New Zealand, then it makes extremely good sense to have these functions in the ministry. And I'll, look, I'll turn for one moment back because, because real world examples are fantastic things. So I'm just going to return briefly, very briefly, sir, to the issue of independence. Because within the ministry, of business, innovation and employment, where the standards executive and standards, well, the standards executive will reside, we see today, we see today three extremely good examples. We have the official assignee, we have the registrar of companies, and we have the commissioner of patents, sir. All three independent, independent bodies through statutory independence that reside in the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. And not a single member opposite, not a single submitter raised any question as to the real independence of those bodies, albeit that they reside in the same ministry which this bill would have the standards executive go into. So again, if you just look at simple evidence, the member is entitled to his own opinion He's not entitled to his own facts, Mr Chair. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Chair.